Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. If this happens to be your very first time to listen to the broadcast, I give you a special welcome. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter. If you can, reach over, get your own copy of God's Word, and join me there, 2 Peter. I'm going to be reading out of the uh, third chapter, the initial verses there, even though we're just really getting our toes into a verse-by-verse study of the book of 2 Peter. But get your Bible, 2 Peter chapter 3. Also get something in which you can jot some notes. I think that'll be a helpful thing for you. But with that pen and paper handy, you can not only take notes, but also jot down our contact information. I have a free gift, a sample packet of gospel tracts I'd like to give to you. And I'll say more about that here in just a moment. Now, friend, when you and I were children, we All of us at some point in time asked our parents some questions to which their answer was this, because I said so. That's why, well, now I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent, and I'm convinced that there are times when the correct answer really is, simply is, because mom and dad say so. But I also know, you know, too, that there comes a time in a child's life as they grow where some clear and reasoned answers need to be given about some of their questions. If I ask the question, why should you and I read the book of Second Peter, the correct answer really could be just this simple. It's, the answer is because it's in the Bible and the Bible is God's word and you and I need to know the word of God. Now, frankly, that is reason enough, but you and I can give some more reasoned answers to answer that question. You and I can stir up each other to read the book. We can provide some reasons that build hopefully some anticipation in our minds and in our hearts and build a desire to want to better understand the book of Second Peter. Now, that's my goal today. I hope you'll stay tuned. Let's see if we can't whet your appetite for what we find here in the book of Second Peter. Get your Bible. Join me there, please. I mentioned gospel tracts here a moment ago. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. A A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to put into your hand a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. I have one of them in my hand right now. And this one, frankly, is one I use a lot. It's one of my personal favorites. Now, just because it's my personal favorite, it doesn't make it yours, but this one is entitled The Best I Can. The Best I Can. Now, why I like it so much is, number one, the print is a little bigger. Number two, it's so clear. It's so simple. It begins this way. A man standing by New York City Harbor suddenly declares, I'm going to swim to London, then plunges into the water headed for open sea, and you shout, hey, You won't get to London that way. Oh, yes, I will. I'm sure I'll make it. Well, what makes you so certain, you say? Well, I'm doing the best I can. Well, the track goes on to say he probably is. A lot of people think that they're going to get to heaven because, well, I'm doing the best I can and God will understand. Friend, God hates sin. You and I are sinners. Sin must be dealt with. It's a debt. It must be dealt with. And you and I doing the best we can does not pay the sin debt. That's why we need Jesus, the Savior, who died on the cross, shed his blood, that we through him might be saved. This gospel tract is simple but clear in laying out the need for Jesus Christ and how far short the best we can do will be in the sight of God. 
the best I can, just one of the gospel tracks in that sample packet. There's about 42 or so tracks in there. Please let me give you that sample packet. My announcer at the end of the broadcast will give you our contact information. Be ready for that. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. All right, if your Bible's open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 say this. Listen now. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both, referring to both 1st and 2nd Peter, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Stop, please, right there. Now, jumping into chapter 3 here to read at the outset of our study of 2 Peter may seem a little strange, but really it is important. The two verses here tell us why Peter wrote 2 Peter. And actually, as we just read there, we find here why he wrote both 1 and 2 Peter. He says here that I'm writing now, well, let me read part of it. I now write unto you in both, which I stir up your pure minds. Both 1 and 2 Peter were to keep awake, to keep stirred up the minds of the believers. In 1 Peter, the audience there was facing some dangers from outside the church. Non-believers were persecuting the believers. But here in 2 Peter, the saints now were facing dangers from inside the church. All of the second chapter of this book talks about false teachers that are in the church that were messing things up, perverting correct doctrine, and their perverted teaching was perverting the life practices, the holy living practices by the true saints. So, Peter the apostle writes to stir up, to awaken the minds of the believers. In the book of 1 Peter again, the saints needed to understand the grace of God that had been provided them so that they could endure persecution in a godly fashion. 1 Peter ends with these words. Chapter 5 of 1 Peter verse 12 says, I have written briefly exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. In the middle of persecution, true believers can stand. Why? They have grace from God. The saints needed God's grace to stand strong in their trials. But now here in 2 Peter, the saints still need grace. At the end of 2 Peter chapter 3, we find these words. Verse 18, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Peter, the Christians needed more truth, more understanding, more knowledge so that they could understand that the false teachers, uh, were what they were saying was wrong, was bad, and was doing damage. They needed the grace of God to grasp all that. Let me remind you here of the whole flow of the book of 2 Peter. I say remind you because if you listened to yesterday's broadcast, I did mention this. You need to get three words beginning with the letter R all fixed into your peanut butter brain. Those three words are these, right, remember, and ruin. I give them again. Three words beginning with the letter R that help us understand the flow of the book. Right, R-I-G-H-T, remember, and then the word ruin. After the opening two verses of 2 Peter chapter 1, where the writer is introduced and the audience is introduced, Peter then, being led by the Spirit of God, spends the first half of chapter 1 urging right, urging right living, holy living. He wants them to live Christ-like lives. The second half of chapter 1 of there of 2 Peter says he wants them to remember They are supposed to remember the truth he has taught and to remember that they have a sure word of prophecy. They have a Bible that they can trust. Now, that being done, that brings us to 2 Peter chapter 2. And the entire chapter 2 deals with ruined teachers, ruined teachers. Not only were they, the teachers themselves, ruined in their lives, but the things that they taught were ruining others. 
because of the false teaching, some people that were true believers, actual born-again believers, began to live messed up lives. They were not not living holy lives. But what was even worse, some non-believers were not hearing the gospel of salvation because the false teachers were teaching a false gospel. But guess what? When we come to chapter 3 of the book, this leads us right back to the first two R words. Chapter 3 opens with a call to remember what had been taught, and the chapter 3 ends with another challenge to right living. So we've got right living leading to remember, leading to ruined leaders. Coming out of that, we come back to remember and then to right living. There's a great question that's asked right near the end of 2 Peter. It's found in chapter 3, verse 11. Here's what it says. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons, or put an up-to-date language, what kind of people ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That's a sobering question, isn't it? The truth that's found here in 2 Peter has not been given to us. It wasn't given to the original readers, nor to us today. It wasn't given so that you cannot and I can be better prepared for a Bible trivia game. It's amazing how many people, perhaps they grew up in Sunday school and so on, perhaps they teach Sunday school, perhaps they even preach the gospel sometimes, were good at Bible trivia, but were not so good at holy living. You see, when we get to heaven, the issue is, do we live like Jesus? Not how much we know, but how much we practice about what we know. That's why Second Peter was given. Beloved, if the salvation in Jesus Christ that you say you received, if that salvation is not leading you to holiness in your day-to-day life, then very likely you were offered a perverted gospel. You were offered something less than the true gospel. You were offered something that does not cleanse your soul from sin. Jesus came to free you and me from sin. He offers freedom from sin to any and to all who will repent of their sin and turn to Jesus Christ by faith and make him their hope for eternal life. Christ came to free us from sin. First of all, to free us from sin's condemnation in our soul. He came to remove the sin stain off of our soul. But secondly, Christ came to free us from the control of sin over our soul, over our daily life. You and I are called to live holy lives. That comes out clear and strong. Let me ask the question of you here. If you were to die today, do you know for sure? I mean, absolutely 100% sure you'd go to heaven. If you say yes, I ask you why. Upon what basis do you have your assurance? If you say, well, I'm doing the best I can, then the best you can is going to fail you because the best you can do is going to fall short. If you want to get to heaven, you've got to be perfect. But all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's why you need a Savior who can offer you salvation on his terms as a gift. You need to receive Jesus today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.